Thank you for that, uh, Anand. It's a little overwhelming to, you know, you hear about rocket science and then you sit next to four girls and two women who've worked in it all their lives. This is hugely inspiring. I would request all of you to give a huge round of applause to our guests here. So the rocket girls or the satellite girls that you see on stage, they were part of 750 girls selected from government schools across the country to launch a satellite called Azadi Sat in February this year. Uh, it was a communication uh, satellite, right? Yes, it was a communication satellite. Beat that, school girls aged 15, 16 already launching satellites. The future is certainly bright for India. A huge round of applause for the rocket girls on stage. Satellite girls. Satellite girls on stage. Thank you so much for that. Um, I, you've got some parts with you. So, you want to tell what it is in your bagel? It's not parts. These are the satellites that we built. This is the world's lightest and first ever 3D printed satellite that went up a NASA's suborbital, of course, Terra Orion rocket. It was uh, considered to be the first lightest satellite. This is the Satish Dhawan satellite, a tribute to Professor Satish Dhawan, a 3U satellite. And that's the big one. That's the Azadi Sat uh, mock model, and uh, which was built by the 750 girls and my team, of course, Space Kids in there. How did you manage to get 750 girls across the country to collaborate on a satellite project? See, uh, lying in the ICU, I was thinking that, you know, I'm not going to kick the bucket without doing something remarkable for the country. So being, being 75th independent uh, anniversary of the country, something has to be done different. And, you know, STEM and women don't go together. That's the greatest myth people have. And they keep saying that, you know, oh, no, I, I don't think you're too good at this. So I was like, no, we got to do this and that too with rural India. So handpicked about 750 children from Jammu Kashmir to Kanyakumari, all the states and union territories, 10 children from each government school, put them together, brought them online because due to COVID, got them online, taught them what is a satellite, what is a rocket, where does a satellite sit in a rocket, what is space first, and then got them to understand the components that go in making payloads and got them to code that and send them to us. And then my team put to integrated the whole satellite. That's so this is how, you know, inspiring. yeah. Um, Ma'am, you know, uh, I firmly believe that there is seriously this myth about STEM and women. All of you are breaking it one by one and breaking it with such force. You're here, you're here. We also have, uh, you know, Dr. Tessie Thomas seated there. And uh, Anuradha TK, for everyone in the room, she was the first uh, woman satellite project director for ISRO. <laughs> She's helmed key, pro uh, key satellite launches such as the GSAT-10 and the GSAT-12. Tell us about your journey, ma'am, what brought you into space and what does it feel like when you're seeing, you know, the next generation of Anuradha TK and Srimati Keshan and a Tessie Thomas seated on stage? First of all, congratulations to Dr. Keshan and uh, her team. Uh, it's a wonderful thing to see that in India, such, uh, uh, you know, movements are happening that the rural children are encouraged. That's something fantastic. And coming to your other question, that uh, women in science and technology, to tell you frankly, it is a myth which is created by West not in India. And uh, if you see, if you really see in all your families, your sisters, your daughters, you want each of them to take science. I mean, it's a natural course, unless someone is very, uh, you know, passionate about doing commerce or uh, arts or any other thing. I think it's a very common thing that uh, girl or boy today, at any economic background, they would like to pursue science and, you know, uh, they want to continue as doctors or engineers. It's a very common thing in India. I think uh, it's nothing unusual for us, even from ancient India. Mm. And so was it for us 
And uh, for me, uh, I don't know how much I can take time. For me, we grew up in a very free environment in our family. And we were always encouraged to ask questions and debate. Do not accept as it is, whatever is told. And you have to reason out. And we were four sisters at home, no brothers. And um, that, that must have been a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, it was. <laughs> Though I miss sometimes, I wish I had a brother. So, um, yeah, it was like, you know, debating all the time. Take anything, whether it is mythology or science or anything that is happening around. We would have debates at home and uh, we, were, we were very inquisitive and we were encouraged to be so. And uh, that's the way we grew up. And we did not have so much pressure as children that you have so much of homework and you like have to get today's children. You hundred on hundred in no. no, 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 no. In fact, even my parents never insisted. And uh, in fact, once I think I got, uh, just when I moved from my uh, vernacular school to English medium school, I really had a tough time adjusting. And I got very pretty low marks in biology, uh, not in maths or physics or anything. In biology, I got less marks. And uh, I was really afraid what my father would say because you had to get signature in the <laughs> report card. And he was so, I'm surprised the way he said, okay, next time you do better, that's all. He, you know, I mean, there was no insistence that you had to stand first. You had to, you know, no rat dress for us. So the and freedom they gave you, in a sense, liberated you to pursue what you wanted to do. You put it very beautifully. I believe in that. In, we have a beautiful quote. Sa vidya ya vimuktaye. It means education is that which liberates you. If you don't get liberated, you haven't been educated, right? That's a Lib brilliant, yeah. brilliant way of putting it. That's true. So that's how we grew up and we had total um, independence to choose what we want to do. And uh, my elder sister, uh, she became a medical doctor. And my parents had an inclination that I too should take up medical thing, I don't know. I got a seat too, but I was not interested. I remember my father was already on transfer. He was here and there. He was in government job. And he sent a telegram. Those days, we didn't have a phone at home. Let Anuradha join medical. Then I told my mom, no, I'm not joining. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Next day, one more telegram came. Let her join what she wants. <laughs> and that was probably the best decision. Yeah, I mean... I would make decisions for myself, and so uh, were my uh, sisters too at home. We were all very independent and, uh, you know, Got it. <laughs> that way. Um, Dr. Kishan, you know, why are you, why do you have this mission uh, to educate girls in India, particularly from government schools? Why do you think space education will be important for them, um, you know, beyond the fact that it looks great? You know, the fact that these 750 girls worked on a satellite that India has launched. What's the larger impact? How is this going to help the country? Well, that's a brilliant question. Uh, you know, the facade of Indian rural children generally internationally is, you know, you carry a mud pot, torn clothes, walking on a deserted path. You know, this is what is picturized everywhere, you know, in all the magazines that you see. I wanted to break that. I wanted to say that, you know, these are not Indian girls. The Indian girls are more powerful if you give them a platform. So give them that platform. And in fact, for this year's UN Girl Children's Day, what we did was the children who worked on Azadi Sat, they were in their uh, rural attire, but we gave uh, satellites and rockets in their hands this and sent that to UN and it was published everywhere. So we said no more Indian girls with mud pots. They are with satellites. And space is the future. Everybody is talking about it. And they want to, you know, uh, I think this is a platform. Uh, I'm, I'm sure I know if I'm going to voice out, they're going to be brickbats. But I would love to voice out saying that the West always loves to trounce upon that Indians are snake charmers still. And we wanted to say no. Our girls, rural India is also powerful. So wow. what are you talking about? People sitting there in ISRO and everything. They are even more powerful. So we will launch Chandrayaan at the first shot. Mangalyan, first shot. Everything 
is possible. So this kind of a power I wanted to give my rural children so that today they stand as a testimony to the rest of the children, rest of the youth of the country as leaders. You know how many children, ha I mean, you should ask this to no, them, I think. Yeah, I think. I think you should ask to them. Talk. Yeah, how they feel about, you know, right. what's the transformation they had. Right. So we have, uh, you know, kids from Kerala, Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh? Chhattisgarh or up Bihar and Tamil Nadu. So uh, one of them will be speaking in Tamil, two of them will be speaking in Hindi and she's going to be speaking in English. We will translate it for the benefit of our audience here. Ninga modala solunga ungalku edukku space podichirukku satellites podichirukku enna aganum nu nenikireenga. Ennoda per J Gugapriya na Tamil Nadu la மதுரை மாவட்டம் திருமங்கலம் அரசு பெண்கள் மேல்நிலை பள்ளியில் பன்னிரெண்டாம் வகுப்பு படிக்கிறேன் ஆசாத்தி சார் டூ எங்கள் எழுநூற்றி எண்பது மாணவிகளின் கனவு ஆசாத்தி சார் டூ அன்னைக்கு பிப்ரவரி பத்தாம் தேதி எழுநூற்றி எண்பது மாணவிகளின் கனவுகளையும் எங்கள் கனவுகளின் அரசி டாக்டர் ஸ்ரீமதி கேசன் அம்மையார் அவர்களின் கடின உழைப்பையும் அதை எங்களுக்கு கற்றுக் கொடுத்த பதினோரு இளம் விஞ்ஞானிகளான சகோதரர்களின் அறிவையும் எங்கள் பெற்றோர் மற்றும் ஆசிரியர்களின் ஆனந்த கண்ணீரையும் சுமந்து கொண்டு வெற்றிகரமாக விண்ணில் சீறி பாய்ந்தது She's from a background that, uh, you know, absolutely rural and uh, she says it was a dream we've never dreamt before and this has really transformed not only our lives, our parents' lives, everybody's lives and we wanted to thank, be thankful for this whole what, mission. What she's being humble about is she owed a lot of gratitude to Dr. Keshan for making her dreams come true. ஆசாத்தி சார் டூக்கு அப்புறமா எனக்கு எனக்குள்ள ஒரு தன்னம்பிக்கை வந்துச்சு இன்னும் நான் நிறைய கண்டுபிடிப்புகள் கண்டுபிடிக்கணும் என்னோட எண்ணம் எல்லாமே ஐஎஸ்ஆர்ஓல சயின்டிஸ்ட் ஆகணும் ஓகே தட் இஸ் ஈஸி டு ட்ரான்ஸ்லேட் ஷீ வாண்ட்ஸ் டு பிகம் அ சயின்டிஸ்ட் இட் ஐஎஸ்ஆர்ஓ ஆல் த வெரி பெஸ்ட் யூ அண்ட் வி வில் இன்டர்வியூ யூ டென் இயர்ஸ் லேட்டர் ஓர் டுவெண்ட்டி இயர்ஸ் லேட்டர் ஆஸ் அ சயின்டிஸ்ட் மேபி ஆஸ் அ ப்ராஜெக்ட் டைரக்டர் தேங்க் யூ ஸோ மச் आप बताइए आपके बारे में आपको अंतरिक्ष में इतनी रुचि क्यों है आप किससे प्रेरित हुई हैं वैसे तो मुझे साइंस में पहले से ही इंटरेस्टेड थे लेकिन जब से मैम के द्वारा यह मिशन चलाया गया और ऑनलाइन कोर्स क्लास के द्वारा मुझे जो टीचिंग मिली इंफॉर्मेशन मिला स्पेस के बारे में उससे मुझे और भी इंटरेस्टेड होने लगा और मुझे स्पेस में और भी इंटरेस्ट होने लगा और आप क्या बनना चाहेंगी बड़े होकर आई वॉन्ट टू बिगम In the science field. Excellent. आप आप बताइए आपको क्यों इंटरेस्ट है स्पेस में अंतरिक्ष में सैटेलाइट्स में माई नेम इज़ हिना साहू और मैम ने जब हमें ये मिशन कराया इसमें भाग कराया हमें तो सबसे पहले हमें नहीं पता था कि अंतरिक्ष क्या होता हम सो, सो, सोचते भी नहीं थे अंतरिक्ष <laughs> के बारे में हम सिर्फ देखते थे कि हाँ होता है अस पृथ्वी में के आगे भी कुछ होता है जो हम आसमान में देखते हैं पर जब हम इस प्रोग्राम में भाग लिए तब पता चला कि अंतरिक्ष क्या होता है अंतरिक्ष में क्या है तो जब हम ये प्रोग्राम करते जाते थे मतलब किए तब हमें लगा कि नहीं हमें इससे आगे बढ़ना है अब हमें अंतरिक्ष में आगे बढ़ना है और जाकर देखना है कि अंतरिक्ष से हमारा भारत देश कैसे दिखता है जैसे हमारा सुपर वन आफ्टर दी अदर दीज गर्ल्स आर जस्ट रिमार्केबल दे डिजर्व अ बिगर राउंड ऑफ अपलॉज आई एम गोन टू लेट द गर्ल फ्रॉम केरला हैव द लास्ट वर्ड टेल अस वॉट यूर ड्रीम्स एंड एस्पिरेशन आर Uh, my name is Nashita Afna Niyam. I am from Kerala, Sidi Sahib Memorial Higher Secondary School. Firstly, I am very proud and very happy to be part of the Sasadi Sat. And a very big thank to our sweet, charming uh, Srimati <laughs> Kesan ma'am. And our girls are hidden in a four walls. They could not come forward to show the talents to the entire world. But in this project, our Srimati ma'am gives our girls the opportunity to show the world so i am remembering an african adage if you educate a man you train a man if you educate a girl you train a village on that brilliant note huge round of applause to all of you i, I think all of you would have seen that mission mangal movie if there's a second version we have four people here four girls who can be part of it thank you very much thank you thank you